Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Cook It and Eat It here on Jim Johnston Reviews the World. And today, we got something truly unique, truly out of this world. One of those things that came up in my news feed on Facebook, and I said, I've got to make it. I've got to make this. I've had to make a couple alterations uh, out of laziness, pretty much, and uh, a couple other alterations for uh, that Jim Johnston style. Now, what we're making today, folks, Polish tacos. Polish tacos, that's not a joke, legitimate thing. We're going to make tacos Polish style. So what we have is sauerkraut. It's Polish, but I much prefer this German style kraut. I'm not going to insult the German friends by trying to pronounce uh, the German language. This brand of German stuff that I can buy at my local Aldi, it's all phenomenal. I especially love their red cabbage. We've got a pound of smoked kielbasa cut up. Mostly coin, but some of the thicker pieces I cut in half then. we got some W sauce, six rashers of bacon cut into big chunks. All right, we have one sweet onion. That was julienne, and the julienne strips were cut in half. It's been marinating in about three tablespoons of a balsamic vinaigrette, a basil balsamic vinaigrette. And then we're going to uh, cook this over butter to caramelize it with that balsamic. That's gonna add flavor. W sauce is gonna add flavor. This and that and the other thing. All right, so how about we get this bacon in the pan and then get things going. All right, we got our bacon cooking in our first pan. I gotta do an episode of Jim Review stuff about this pan one of these days. So this is a carbon steel pan, and I picked it up on sale for less than six bucks. Brand new, and it's quickly become one of my favorite pans. I actually did make my uh, a single batch of macaroni and cheese in here. Anyway, that's enough gushing over the pan. We got the bacon going. We're gonna let that drain off and uh, cook off. We will drain off some of the grease. Uh, when it's ready and save that for a future recipe for here on cook it and eat it in the meantime we got a smaller frying pan heating up actually got to turn up a little higher i got the bacon going over medium high heat by the way we got this pan heating up and i'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter in it this is not a healthy meal tonight folks this is good old-fashioned soul food cooking uh polish style my opinion and you cannot change my opinion on this no matter what you say to me food speaks all language food crosses all culture if we could all just sit down have a meal have some music, we could all get along a lot better because constants throughout all of civilization from the highest to the lowest are food and music. That's enough of my rant. So getting that pan heated up and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put, ooh, a piece of bacon fill in here. And these uh, these splatter shields come in very handy and this one's from the Dollar Tree. So gotta do another video, uh, an episode of Jim Reviews on uh, Dollar Tree finds one of these days too. All right, so. We do want to caramelize these onions, so we want a fair amount of butter, but that's enough. We're going to take that extra back out of the way, and then we're going to go with our onions. These were marinating in about three tablespoons of nice basil balsamic. Let's take a look at our bacon. That's about there. I'm going to turn this pan down a little bit because we're getting a little smoky wokey. And actually, I'm going to pull this off the heat. All right, I gotta drain this bacon grease. I'll be right back. Okay, our bacon's all drained of the excess grease and done and out. Now we've got just, uh, looks like bourbon. And just a few tablespoons of bacon grease that will cool off and then chill out. That'll come in handy in a future recipe I was planning on making here on the channel. We've got our onions starting to cook down. Gotta turn these up a bit. All right, we gotta take two on that. Sorry folks, I noticed where it is I went to stir my onions. I noticed that I had spilled almost as much bacon grease on the counter as I had gotten in that jar. And it was right here next to the burner, so. Had to clean that up to make sure we didn't accidentally start a fire, even though this no open flames here. If bacon grease gets hot enough, it will combust. Anyway, yeah, I'm saving up that grease. A couple tablespoons for uh, a couple future recipes we're gonna do here on the channel. And like, as always, any of the fats, any, really any ingredients I use, if you have a health concern or an allergy concern, Change them out for something else. I expect you to all be smart enough adults. This is age-restricted material after all. So I expect you all to be smart enough adults to know if something's not going to work for you to go ahead and change it out for something that works. So we want to let these onions brown and caramelize. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our sausage in the pan over here. And now we're going to give the uh, sausage about two squirts or dashers of W sauce. And then we're going to give the onions one. There we go. Okay, we're just going to let this sausage and these onions cook and brown up for the next several minutes. And we'll be right back with you. Okay, we're back. And we've been letting everything cook for a few minutes. And that's what we're doing. We're just browning everything off right now. Going to go ahead and turn both these up just a little bit. All beef kielbasa. Looks and smells wonderful. 
I'm gonna pick up just a tad of smoky flavor from both the bacon and the W sauce we tossed in there. And these are gonna be some beautiful buttered caramelized onions for a topper when we're all done. We got that going on. And then for this recipe, I saw this recipe on Facebook. It was actually on a friend of mine's page named Steve. More importantly than Steve is his YouTube channel and his other social media accounts, which are Loki the Siberian. That's Loki, like the god of mischief, the Siberian. Uh, another one of my husky guys, husky friends. And uh, so I saw it on his Facebook page. He just posted it saying he'd like to eat it. I saw it and just said, yeah, not only do I got to eat that, I can cook it and eat it. So the recipe online, or what I saw online, called for a pierogi dough to be used to make the shell. And I wasn't going to put in all that kind of effort. So we got the smoked kielbasa, we got the gonna be caramelized onions, we got some bacon, we got the sauerkraut, which we're gonna add right to this pan, about half that jar of sauerkraut. So we need something for the taco shell, and I thought about it and pondered it quite a bit. And Indian style roti bread would have been really close. Probably the closest thing to do without making actual pierogi dough for a taco shell, closest thing I could come up with besides doing that would be to get flaky biscuits and roll them out into eight or nine inch rounds so they were nice and thin and then compress those layers and then fry those in a pan over butter. That would have come out really similar, really similar to a pierogi dough. But again, I didn't quite want to put in that much effort. So what I did do, I bought a package of wheat pitas. They actually didn't have the white ones. And you all know how uh, the bread and stuff, almost always wheat or multigrain. So what I did is I bought some of those, and I went ahead and I split them, split the pita pockets, and then we're going to fry these in butter uh, when we get ready to do the assembly. So I went ahead and I pre-split two of these, that one was stuck a little. It'll all taste the same in the end. Okay, at this point our sausage is getting pretty close to there. So we're going to go on with our last flavor augmentations. We're going to have a sprinkle of oregano. I'd say probably a half teaspoon. Sprinkle of garlic, about the same amount. And then several shakes of crushed red pepper just so our final meal has a little bit of heat in it. Okay, it's been a few more minutes. And our sausage is looking pretty much nice and dark browned up. Smells great. Onions are getting there. All right, so I think it's time for us to add our sauerkraut. Again, this is a German kraut. And I'm thinking we're going to use about half a jar. And I did go ahead and pre-drain this. Now, if you don't really like sauerkraut, yeah, you can always take this out of the jar, rinse it with a strainer, let it drain. But I like sauerkraut. I like fried sauerkraut. So I just want to go right in with this, about half the jar. Again, I pre-drained out some of the juice out of here. I'm not too worried about it because we're going to fry this kraut with this little bit of grease that's in here and these oils. Let it pick up some extra flavor. Okay, I think it's going to end up being two-thirds of a jar of sauerkraut. I think if I put the whole jar in, it'll be too much. I'm going to put in one more forkful and then we'll stir it and see how it looks. Right now, that's about two-thirds of the jar. All right, things have been happening. Our onions caramelized up and ready to go. We're going to get those off and into a holding container. All right, it looks like that... Uh sauerkraut might be drawing flies that means it's got a good stink to it we want to get a pan on here and get it good and hot so we can toast these wheat makeshift pierogi shells fry them up in some butter here is our almost finished beef kielbasa with the sauerkraut and i did go ahead off camera folks and added a few grinds of black pepper and a light dusting of salt free southwest seasoning just to wake the flavors up a little bit more you can leave those out or put them in and this is looking smelling delicious Turn this down pretty low just to keep it warm. Okay, I think we're ready for pita fry. So we're gonna go with a nice pat of butter, a little more actually. So normally a pierogi dough would be a wet, almost like noodle piece of dough that obviously pierogies are usually, but not always, fried in butter. So we're gonna fry our pita halves or cook our pita halves in butter. And this is a solid medium heat. We don't want it too hot because we do want it to soak up some of that butter moisture as it browns. We also don't want it to, uh, to burn. Another reason that we wanna not have it super hot, but hot enough that we can get a good butter toast on this. I'm gonna go down with, I'm gonna use this as the inside. This part is the inside and this side is the outside. So I'm gonna go down with the inside first. Spin it around, let that butter get in there. 
on there and then we'll let her cook up. And while that's going to get some uh, veggies going with this meal. Yeah, sauerkraut and onions are technically vegetables, but I wanted a little something more. So I just have some uh, some of that there. California. Some of that California blend. And I just added some of that balsamic vinaigrette I was talking about with the onions. I just got my hands on the other day. As well as a little black pepper and garlic. If you had smell vision that balsamic, that it's a basil balsamic I picked up at my local Aldi. Actually, when I went to get the last couple ingredients for this. Whew! That's a good, that's a good dressing, especially since I got it for a buck fifty. And also one more thing before I forget about it. The sauerkraut I did stick with three quarters of a 24 ounce jar. Again, Again, I could have very easily put the whole jar in here and it wouldn't have been overwhelming kraut to sausage ratio but I wanted to hold back a little bit a little bit of that kraut uh, for some hot dogs sounds weird but I really like hot dogs with steak sauce and fry and sauerkraut fried sauerkraut specifically or even just fresh kraut so it seems like a weird combination but the combination of like a charred nice charred hot dog some sauerkraut and that steak sauce Mwah, delicious. Probably not something I need to make a video on, but who knows? Maybe you'll see it show up on Instagram. All right, all right, all right. Here on Cook It and Eat It, I think it's time to assemble our Polish tacos and eat. Again, here's our pound of smoked kielbasa with three quarters with three quarters of a 24 ounce jar of German style sauerkraut, six rashers of bacon, a medium sweet onion, caramelized in a bit of butter and a basil vinaigrette. We've got our wheat pierogi shells. Again, this is made out of a, a, a pita pocket. Earlier in the video, I gave you a couple options uh, otherwise you could use to get something a little more authentic. Before I go on, before I forget, again, I wanna thank Steve from at Loki the Siberian. Uh, he's on all your major platforms. He's got a, co uh, a cool channel where he talks with his uh, three Siberian Huskies, Loki being the the head one, that's why his channel is called Loki the Siberian. Also his little girl Sasha, check her out. Very great story on her. And then his petite little Izzy. So again, Steve, Loki the Siberian, I want to thank you for giving me the inspiration for this video. And hopefully some other people out here in the little community knock this off and do this video and get it put up before I do. Because I know this one's not going up uh, till a couple weeks. So when you see this folks, it'll be a couple weeks after I shot it. So alright though. Enough of me blabbing, let's make a Polish taco. Get that sauerkraut, sausages. I don't wanna overload these, so I can get just a little bit more. And that one, another piece of meat over there. Spin the plate around. I really like to do fun, interesting, outside the box things with my food. So yeah, like I said, like I mentioned, when I saw this one on the Facebook, I just knew I had to make it. My history with sausage and sauerkraut and bacon and anything else is anything to go by. I know this is going to be amazing. All right, a little topping of onions. And I think this is about enough for six to eight, I'd say six to eight good sized tacos. Probably, yeah, six to eight. Might want more onion than that, but definitely enough for my dinner tonight and my lunch tomorrow probably. Then we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of the bacon on top. Do I have a clean finger to stop this? Okay, yes. here's our finished tacos. Polish tacos, don't they look wonderful? How do y'all like my new aqua marine plate I brought, bought, got this special just for doing food reviews. Figured everyone was getting tired of looking at everything on various shades of red. Sorry folks, red's my favorite color, but this has a nice pop with food on it, so look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. And before I take a bite, I think I'm just gonna give it a light sprinkle of this everything bagel seasoning, and there we go. Polish taco, let's see how she tastes. Had a toothpick in there for the photographs. Nope, nope. Sorry, folks. Nope, this is, oh, this is garbage. This, this is junk. I gotta take it out of here. I'm just kidding. This, that's, that's like the oldest joke in my family. You make something phenomenal and you tell everybody else it's garbage so you can eat it all yourself. No, folks, wow. This is amazing. I'm gonna take another bite. Give me a moment. Oh my God. Mm. Salty, sour, seasoning, smoky, crunch, soft flavor oh my god mm. that's amazing folks i don't know what i expected anything but amazing kielbasa and sauerkraut amazing bacon amazing caramelized onions amazing pretty much any kind of dough fried in butter amazing this is great it's a great alternative to something mundane that's why i picked up on this that's what you see me try to do here on the show all the time we go basic but we also like to take the everyday items turn them on their side and get rid of the mundane for something truly amazing, wonderful, but moreover, fun. Danke, Jane, folks. 
I want to thank you for watching another episode of Cook It and Eat It here on Jim Johnston Reviews the World. I'm your host, Jim. And if you like my stuff, folks, please, 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 please subscribe, comment down below, and share this with your friends to help me grow the world audience. That's all we have for you today. We'll see you next time. But before I go, I want you all, my internet friends, to know, be weird, be free, and most importantly, be independent.